So the TensorFlow website has a pretty good tutorial on how to perform image classification, which is going to be a little bit different from our previous examples uh, of image classification. But I've modified this a little bit just to simplify some things. It's essentially the same, uh, same tutorial, but I've, I've broken some things out, maybe changed some of the language. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the table of contents because we're just going to work through this step by step. Uh, now this is an image classification uh, example, so we're going to get all of the necessary libraries here. I'm going to go ahead and just run this. So this is going to give us, uh, you know, a couple of different libraries such as Pillow. This is going to allow us to, to take a look at some of the images and then some of our TensorFlow uh, libraries that we care about. So, you know, like Keras, which is a neural network or library that runs on top of TensorFlow. Uh, so we're going to get the data first and uh, we're going to run this cell and what it's going to do is it's going to go out to this uh, this Google story or Google Cloud Storage uh, folder and it's going to pull down this this uh, file full of all of these different images. And that's downloading, and you can see you get a nice little update there. So that's kind of that's kind of nice, and that's running. So now we have all of those images downloaded onto the machine that's running our our notebook, and we can see how many images there are. So if we run this, it's going to look at those folders uh, and access those. So you can see we have 3,670 images, and we can actually take a look at each one of those if we want to see like the roses that are there. Uh, run this, and then uh, we can you know this is just pulling all the roses files, and you could look at you know various roses there. So you can see here, there's, there's what rows number one look like. Uh, you know, that's rows 100. If you want to see 111, you know, it's just going to load that. So you can see here, lots of different pictures of roses, some variability there. So also some tulips, and you know, we can see the tulips, and this is just going to let us take a look at each one of those. So you can see there are some tulips, and we could say, let's look at, you know, 290, or 291. And we'll see what that tulip looks like. So there you go. So you can see just some variability in those images. Now, uh, we're going to take a look at, uh, we're going to get all of this data into a data set uh, using some of these uh, utilities. So this data set is going to allow us to set the image height, the image width uh, for each one of these images. And we, we are still splitting here. So in our, our example with Vertex, we looked at an 80% split for the training and then 20% for validation. And we're doing that here. You can see we have uh, you know a training set here that's going to be 80% of our data. And then we have a validation set here that's going to be 20% of our data. And we can see, you know, so let's uh, let's go ahead and make sure that we run all these blocks. Otherwise, it won't work. So let me run these one by one. So that one's good, and then that one's good here, and then this one's good too. So we should be set. All right. And if we want to take a look at what's in there in that uh, in those data sets, you can see these are the different class names. These are the labels for our data. Uh, so we can visualize this data. So here are some images from the the training set just let that run and there we go we have roses and dandelion there you go there's just uh, some various different um, images there so we can now set some tuning parameters so this is going to allow us to you know prefetch and, and you know basically run these out of run these images out of memory instead of loading them from the disks uh, disk because disk loading can be a little bit slower so we're going to also create a normalization layer. So this is basically going to take all of those different uh, value, those RGB values, and then it's going to scale them to a zero uh, from between zero and one. So if we take a look at this here, I'm going to run this, and you can see this is going somewhere between zero and one. So you know this is uh, this is breaking these down uh, into a, a simpler uh, data range. So now we're going to create the sequential model. So a Keras sequential model is basically, uh, it allows you to have different uh, layers for, for your model. So you can see that rescaling layer is right there in the model. And then we have some uh, convolution layers. We'll get into that later in this course. Uh, and then we're going to, you know, basically a sequential model takes uh, input tensors and it gives you an output. So a tensor is just basically a, a dimensional or sort of a dimensional array is a good way to think about it. So we can take an image 
image and we can represent it as a uh, uh, you know a multi-dimensional array that involves the pixels in the image and you know some particular kind of uh, colors so you know if you think about an image an image is just a giant matrix which has uh, red green and blue values in, in each one of those each one of the uh, cells in the matrix so that's really what the tensors are here we're, we're turning the images into tensors in order to do this training so we're going to compile this model and then we'll see what the summary looks like and you can see we've got the different layers It's telling us some details there about what those uh, those layers look like and then we're going to train the model so this is going to take a little bit of time basically we are training this model uh, for 10 epochs 10 uh, iterations through this this particular model and that's going to take a moment so you can see here we're getting through the first so loss accuracy eh, getting a little bit better here but um, you know we're, we're probably not going to turn out a great model here from this uh, this particular example for a few reasons so once that's done we can take a look at what this looks like when we visualize those results and you can see here that we have uh, the validation set we, we might be overfit on that training set so you can see here there's a lot of uh, accuracy as we're working through the training set but the validation is, is pretty flat so you know basically what this is telling us is that we're predicting very effectively for our training set but our validation set is not getting the same kinds of results so we probably want to be able to improve that you know this is this is likely an example of overfitting where we have basically trained a model to work really 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 well on a small set of data so when you do that you know there's a variety of reasons you, that can happen it might be that your your in inputs are too similar uh, it could be that you have trained too much on or you know like too many iterations on one particular set of data that's limited um, you know there's a variety of ways to do to handle that or to that, that can cause that but one of the ways you can you can handle this is data augmentation so uh, data augmentation basically takes all of those images that you have and and reforms them a little bit so you can see this example it's going to show you what some of those look like uh, so once we we uh, we modify this you can see it's rotating the images a little bit it's flipping them it's distorting them a little bit so this is allowing us to to kind of have different views into the same images um, and this is going to you know change the input so that we're not looking for the same patterns in the same layout each time we're getting differences in those those patterns in those layouts another thing you can do is drop out which is Basically, we're, we're taking some random uh, percent of the the uh, you know the uh, the movement between layers here. We're doing, we're dropping out values. So you know, um, and again, we'll get more into these concepts in, in later uh, later videos. But now, when we do this, if once we run through these last couple of uh, last couple of items here, uh, we'll see that we're going to get much better results when we run this particular set. Uh, so we skipped over the summary there because we already looked at it before and this summary is going to be not terribly different. So a couple of things we changed here. One is we changed, um, we added the data augmentation. Two is we changed the, uh, we changed the, uh, the dropout. So now we're, we're randomly dropping out uh, some of these, these uh, process, some of the, you know, movement between some of these layers or transfer between some of these layers. And we've also trained it for more epochs, which should cause us to have a, you know, because we have more data, uh, it should cause us this model to be a little bit more accurate. And we'll see here, we're through 11 now, we should get to 12. And then uh, we'll be up to 15 just in a moment. almost there and here we go almost there all right so i think we'll see that this one is is going to do a lot better and you can see here this this validation seems a lot more in line with what you would expect so this is probably a, a pretty good model and if we uh if we run this now we can see that this is probably you know pretty likely that that's going to be a sunflower and uh, if we take a look at that you know you can see that's that's definitely a sunflower so you know this is this is kind of how you work through a notebook you, you work through the steps you try to modify the code where you need to you try to understand what you can do here and hopefully it's a pretty good exercise in, in, in working through this now if you think about this compared to the vertex example the vertex example involved a whole lot of uh, 
of different like automation of these steps you know like a lot of the things that we're doing here like setting up layers and augmenting data you know a lot of that's happening automatically so it allows us to do a lot more with less data but you know if you know what you're doing you can probably get pretty good results out of something like tensorflow uh you know it just requires a little bit of tuning and a little bit more understanding thank you for watching